Alright, ladies and gentlemen, we're here to talk about uh, some wrestling. Uh, some wrestling news. So we're going to just get right into it here. We're going to talk about the Raw ratings uh, from last night. Um, the uh, One of the legendary Wild Samoans and the father of Roman Reigns, Sika, uh, passed away today peacefully at the age of 79. And uh, we'll talk about that the updated card for Money in the Bank. And also, why, why Pat McAfee wasn't on Monday Night Raw. And, uh, he actually revealed us today on his podcast. So, yeah, you know, we're just going to all get, on to, get into it right here. So, let's talk about the ratings. So, WWE Raw last night, uh, it pulled in its highest viewership in uh, P18 to 1849 demo since the Raw after WrestleMania. Uh, had, it had 1.8 million viewers and a 0.61 in the P18 to 49. So, the company's on fire right now. They've done really good the last two weeks. Especially Monday Night Raw, they've been really good. And SmackDown thinks ain't going to be good this week as well because you had the Bloodline Ceremony and it's in Madison Square Garden, so somebody's going to return. And some people have said Roman could return. I don't know, but you never know. I mean, it is a big show, MSG. You never know, but it might be, end up be Jimmy maybe returns. I don't know. It's going to be fun to watch. The last bit, that has been on fire. Just the production, the just the action in the ring. They've been creative. Excellent. And Triple H has been in his bag these last few weeks. So the ratings were even good for SmackDown as well. So they'd be bringing some pretty good ratings. They had what, 2.3 2, 2. Mil, 2. million for SmackDown or something like that? So they're doing really good with these ratings. And uh, the White Six has been cooking, so that's probably why Pete, some people may be tuning in to be interested in what they're doing with the White Six. And it was an amazing show. And I don't know if the show spot maybe the show could have spiked when the VHS tape played. Pete and I tuned in. But Triple H's been cooking these last two weeks. Put some respect on his damn name. See so, yeah, the ratings. That's your raw ratings. And I want to talk about this. Uh, Debbie Hall of Famer, Seiko Anua, uh, of the legendary Wild Samoans and uh, Roman Reigns' father, uh, passed away at the age of 79 today, confirmed. So, glad Roman has time off at the moment. But, I'm only at a 79. It may, it may seem old, but some people live longer than that, but unfortunately, uh, Sika wasn't. But, at least uh, he got to basically become the share of the moment he officially became the tribal chief uh, with, his, with his father. So, he got to, he, at least he got to see his son become one of the best WWE champions uh, ever. And yeah, it was, it was uh, in a statement, he passed away peacefully, so at least... It wasn't painful or anything, at least it was peaceful. He didn't have to go through any pain. But at least he ought to watch that whole title reign play out. I mean, that's awful. But I'm glad he got some time off to spend with him. Because he ought to see his son at the absolute top of the business. And you know, as a, like, if you're a father, you could not ask for any more. So condolences uh, to Roman and, his, um, and basically the whole family. So we'll go over the updated card for Money in the Bank now. Uh, Cody Rhodes, Randy Orton, and Kevin Owens versus the Bloodline was confirmed. It didn't say which three members of the Bloodline, but maybe Money in the Bank. Maybe there'll be some something that happens after. Maybe Roman returns then. Who knows? I mean, I think his return's imminent. It's going to happen, I think, either at Money in the Bank or SummerSlam. One of those two. Uh, but then we got Damian Priest versus Seth Rollins for the World Heavyweight Championship. If Seth Rollins loses, he can't challenge at least while Damian Priest is champion. He can't challenge for that belt. But if he wins, Damian Priest leaves Judgment Day, which is looking, what's, looking like that's what, what's going to happen. Sami Zayn versus Braun Breaker for the Intercontinental Championship. That's going to be a banger. This whole card's going to be bangers. And then you have the men, men and women's Money in the Bank ladder matches. That's going to eat with that Toronto crowd. This is an excellent card. And people will be like, 
Oh yeah. Oh, it's only five matches. I mean, I don't know why people complain. It's gonna be an, an excellent card. I know. I mean, yeah, I want more matches, but five matches is good enough for me. Pretty hot card, pal. Two Money in the Bank qualifying matches are set for next week on uh, Monday Night Raw. Uh, Sheamus, Drew McIntyre, and Ilya Dragunov for the men. That's going to be a damn banger. That's going to be a banger. And then we have Zoe Stark, Dakota Kai, and Ivy Nile in the uh, second one. I mean, it's pretty obvious who should win. We want Dakota Kai, pal. She needs to get that push. I don't know. I don't know who will win the second one. It's tough, but yeah. Well, that was what I was talking about. Announced a bloodline acknowledgement ceremony will be live this Friday on SmackDown from MSG with Jacob Fatu, Tong Tama Tonga Tonga Loa, Solo Sokola, and Paul Heyman. Something big is gonna go down. Because it's from MSG. Something's going to happen. And Jimmy Uso returning. That'd be good with me. And look, I want, I want, I want to see Roman, but it'd be insane, but it's probably Jimmy. But you never know. I know people would say, well, it's too early, but you never know. It's MSG. But who knows? But you can't have a bloodline ceremony without Roman or the Usos. So, last night on Monday Night Raw, uh, WrestleVote said this during the show, um, via WrestleVote's Ludwig Kaiser suffered an injury on Monday Night Raw. So, uh, the injury bug strikes again. It looked like a spot happened when uh, he landed on the, uh, the table. He's kind of holding his side. So, it might be, could have could been his ribs. So, yes, yeah, it sucks. And prior to the injury, he was going to compete in the Money in the Bank qualifier next week. So I don't know what the injury is, but it looked like it could have been on his ribs. He clutched at his ribs after that table spot, so it's probably something with his ribs for sure. So remember the WrestleMania 40 documentary behind the curtain we were waiting on? Well, it will finally premiere on Wednesday, July 3rd, 2024. On WWE's official YouTube channel. Finally, this documentary will be premiering. We've been waiting a while for this. It's been saying, oh, he'll release soon. It'll re release soon. I'm like, when's it going to release? Well, it will July 3rd, 2024. Finally. Took them long enough. Remember, it was supposed to be the Wednesday night after Mania, and now it's going to be on July 3rd. So, WB's race, WB Race Wars with the most matches in 2024. Cody Rhodes with 52. Jay Uso uh, with 50. JD with 48. Finn Balor with 44. And Damian Priest with 43. Cody Rhodes, the workhorse, pal. See, WB Race Wars are grinders. But the Judgment Day do race a lot. That's gonna, and I, one of these days will be your future Mr. Money in the Bank. Yeet Jey Uso. So, uh, on the Chris Van Vallette, v v Vallette, how do you say his name, last name? I'm not part of the nerd community. Uh, Ray Mysterio believes that Dominic could be a future world champion. He's, I mean, he can be. By the time, I mean, give it, maybe give it a year or two, but could happen at some point. He's turned himself into a massive star already. So, yeah, I can definitely see it. Uh, so, yeah, as I was talking about, SmackDown last week averaged 2.3 million viewers for, uh, from uh, Chicago. It was a hell of a show. My favorite SmackDown probably in a, in a little bit. And the show didn't miss. Daddy B is on a hell of a run. With all these, like, storylines at once. They're, they have so many good storylines right now. And it was a great show. And good, some good viewership as well. So we have to talk about Dave Meltzer. He talked about The Miz, his performance on WWE Raw commentary last night. 
He said Miz on commentary was, I guess the term would be predictable. Just like every announcer. Predictable. Yeah, they're not trying to be the star of the show, Mr. Meltzer. I wonder what he'd say about AEW, B or B. He'd probably be like, Oh, Chris, you're going to such a good job. <laughs> That's Dave Meltzer, uh, colorized, ladies and gentlemen. He said because he said nothing. He was essentially the Miz doing one of the promos where he got the, he's got the great delivery, but he's got nothing to say. Predictable. He's on commentary, buddy. He's not there to steal the show. What's wrong with it? He was a last... He was a last-minute replacement. Dave Meltzer, CTE, ladies and gentlemen, CTE. So, a lot of people were talking about Pat McAfee missing Raw last night. I even said it last night. I thought it was something with the White Six, but uh, it wasn't. Uh, he actually missed Raw last night due to it was uh, actually a legitimate. Last second family emergency, he revealed it on his podcast uh, today, the Pat McAfee show. And I thought it was part of the White Six storyline because I didn't know anything about this, but he said on the show it, his father in law passed away unexpected, so it wasn't it, it, unexpected. And that's why Cole said, I'm not going to get too much into it or something like that on commentary. Yeah, I hope, but um, prayers to Pat McAfee. Um, is this tough to lose a uh, father-in-law? So hopefully, um, Pat McAfee gets better soon. Because it's tough to deal with a loss like that. Yeah, P thoughts are with Pat and his family. And he, uh, put the tweet out about 1 o'clock, uh, tell your people, people you love them. And, uh, he revealed what happened. I'm very sorry to hear this, uh, from Mr. McAfee. But, it's never easy, but such a great perspective and message in the face of difficult time. So hopefully uh, he can hang in there. But I'm glad he was, he was able to open, open up about this, and it's probably tough for him yesterday, and and his wife as well. Uh, but yeah, that's, but I just wanted to mention that because that's why Pat McAfee wasn't on Monday Night Raw last night. And the reasoning behind him not being on Raw was that last in an emergency. The original script had apparently Nikki, Nikki Cross handing that box off to uh, McAfee instead of Michael Cole, but because Pat McAfee couldn't be there, they handed it off to Michael Cole. So, yeah. Um, that's all the wrestling news I want to talk about here. So, uh, yeah, until next time, I'm Alcalot. Peace. I'll do an Ask for News after this.